Hello. Um, right. Uh, characteristics of disorders. Jesus, a fly almost went in my ear then. Um, a weird bullet point this, I think, to be honest. I'm not going to get a 16 marker on this. Um, probably mostly going to get a 4 marker. You just need to know the behavioural emotional and cognitive characteristics for phobias depression and ocd i'm going to be going through the very very basic ones there are a lot more that you can use but i'm going to be going through the basic ones in this bullet point um we're going to start with phobias as well uh if i'm going to put just put my face over that clown because i don't like clowns so phobias obviously are a type of anxiety disorder um what i should say about this by the way is some um some symptoms appear in all three disorders so they are um not comorbid there's a lot of symptom overlap between phobias for example anxiety anxiety appears in phobias because phobias is an anxiety disorder um anxiety appears in depression and anxiety appears in ocd as well so there's a lot that are i'm going to use a proper posh term here and I need to stop saying the word proper. There, oh my God, I don't know how to talk if I don't say the word proper. Um, there are some symptoms that are idiosyncratic to the disorder. So they appear in that disorder and maybe not many others. Phobia is quite common, 10% of the population. I think that's quite low, personally. I, th I genuinely think that's quite low. But I do think there's a bit of a misconception between fears and phobias, right? Everybody has fears, not everybody has phobias. So let's go through some of these. So phobias. Um, let's go for the cognitive ones. There are more, there are more cognitive characteristics than the ones I'm going to give you. But People with phobias have a recognition that their anxiety is exaggerated. That they know, they know that um, they, they know that uh, their phobia is irrational. They are aware that the the clown isn't going to kill them. They are aware that the dog isn't going to kill them. But they so they cognitively they are aware of it behaviorally obviously there's a lot of avoidant behavior so they will try to avoid the uh the stimulus and there is generally by the way a disruption of function and what we mean by that is the 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 phobia debilitates their life their day-to-day -day life and emotionally there is quite a lot with phobias actually but the way you would write that is they have a persistent and excessive fear and they also have a fear of particular stimuli as well so emotionally phobias deal with um with fear more than anything depression very common much more common apparent depression is more common than phobias i never would have thought that but 20 percent across uh, different cultures and it's, it's seen as an affective disorder like an emotional disorder rather than an anxiety type disorder uh, and as we know as we know this is why you don't do screencasts outside as we know, depression affects twice as many females as it does males. Um, though, is that because males hide it or culturally uh, it's not supposed to be uh, suffered by males? Um, depression, and this is not commonly known by the way, surprisingly, by teenagers, but depression is known as what's called a cyclical and an episodic disorder. That means you don't, if you have depression, you don't have it constantly. You know, you don't go down to a depressed level and think, right, this is life now, and you just carry on in that depressive episode. You'll have moments and episodes of uh, normal functionality, right? And then you may go down and something may trigger you and you go down into another episode. Nobody has depression constantly. Some people, a lot of people actually, have one or two or three episodes and then they recover absolutely fine. Some people have depression for the rest of their life, though arguably because they 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 focus their treatment on antidepressants, which don't actually treat depression. They just get you in a place whereby then you can go get it treated properly. 
So let's have a look at some of these. Um, not as well, sorry, not as many. There, there are quite a lot. Depression, as we will look later on, is a very much a cognitive disorder, as well as an emotional one, absolutely. But it's very much a cognitive disorder. So people with depression suffer delusions, typically delusions about themselves. So a delusion is a faulty idea about something. Um, Donald Trump thinking that he won the election the second time round, that is a delusion. It's a faulty idea that is not actually based in reality. Um, people thinking that aliens are going to come down and blow the earth up on, on December the 20th, 2024, for example, that's a delusion. It's, it's so... People with people with depression don't suffer those delusions. They suffer more delusions about themselves. They think they are worthless. They think they, they are useless. And it's just not true. They have reduced concentration probably because of a lack of sleep. And they tend to think quite a lot. They ruminate. That's a good word to use. They ruminate about death and suicide quite a lot. Behaviorally, there's a lot of changes with depression as well. So they lose energy, uh, again, mainly because of sleep. And typically, by the way, they lose interest in activities that they used to find quite pleasurable. So someone who is absolutely loves playing football, for example, may not all of a sudden want to play football. Um, and will think, oh, I don't really see why I'm here. I'm not enjoying myself. Social impairment, social withdrawal as well weight changes and sleeping changes as well uh, the weight changes by the way the weight changes are plus or minus five percent in a month so if your weight changes by i think it's five or ten percent within a month that would be the criteria for you having depression consider why your weight would go up if you're depressed also consider why your weight would go down if you're depressed as well so it Obviously, it can't go both. Uh, it will go one or the other. And then emotionally, loss of enthusiasm. Obviously, there's a constant depressed mood and feelings of worthlessness as well, which which is also a little bit cognitive. And then finally, OCD. Sorry, OCD. Um, the rarest of all the ones we look at. Only 2% of people, between 1.2 and 2% of people will get OCD. So in the college, there is statistically between 80 and 90 people that will have OCD. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. You certainly, and OCD is not just, oh, I want to walk. I want to, I don't want to walk on the cracks on the pavement. Or it's not just, oh, I, I want to make sure my door is locked. OCD is a very, very difficult, a very, very pervasive an extremely debilitating disorder i would say and i think psychologists would agree with me that ocd is the most debilitating disorder we look at out of the three phobias depression ocd i've, I've seen people um uh i've seen people institutionalized for ocd um so it's it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, it, is an, it is an anxiety disorder. It does go a lot deeper than that. And one thing I do want you just to note here, and I will be going through this in the screencast in a bit more detail later on, but OCD has intrusive thoughts. That's a really, really tough symptom to have, by the way, and it would be worth having a look. Let's have a look in a bit more detail. So cognitively, there's quite a lot. There, there's a lot. There's, there's, there's a lot. Um... Uh, cognitively, uh, people have recurrent thought patterns, and that is what we call an obsession, where you, this thought goes over in your head again and again and again and again, and you cannot turn it off. It's horrible, by the way. It really is horrible. Self-generated self generated recognition. So sufferers know the thoughts are not externally ins inserted, so it's different. So they, they know this thought is in their head. They don't believe that somebody is putting this thought in their head like a schizophrenic individual would they know this thought is in their head and they know it's their thought so they recognize that this is a thought that i'm coming up with this is not being implanted into me and they realize as well that the thought is horrible so typically speaking these obsessions by the way are not go pet that dog go pet that dog go pet that dog go pet that dog they're usually pretty graphic they're usually pretty horrible and they very often socially unacceptable and the people the sufferers know that so they realize that these thoughts are inappropriate behaviorally 
huge debilitation in function, right? People cannot function everyday life because it destroys their life a lot of the time. If it's a severe or moderate case, if it's a light case, a mild case, you may be able to deal with it fine. But if it's a moderate to, I think moderate is worse than mild. Is moderate worse than mild? No. Uh, yes it is yeah, yeah. yeah. mild okay. moderate severe mild moderate severe okay so mo- if it's a moderate or severe case then you probably won't be able to uh function in everyday life um and social impairment if you have ocd you're not going to want to hang around with friends and there's as it says there's a huge drop off in social functionality uh, by the way what we're looking at here is the obsessions right oh, wait hold on have i wait okay i've oh, oh i've done that a bit weird are these these yeah so these are the obsessions what i'm going through here are the obsessions the next bit is the uh, uh, compulsions the, so the obsessions are all pretty much mainly internal so um if you have obsessions you're going to feel extreme anxiety and you're going to fear that you're losing your identity this is a really key one by the way you're going to feel like all of a sudden your thoughts are not your own and you cannot trust yourself um and that's where the intrusive thoughts come in uh compulsions What's a compulsion? A compulsion, again, definitely write this down. A compulsion is a behavior that is con- that is done in order to try reduce the anxiety caused by the obsessions. So obsessions are internal and they tend to lead to compulsions, which are behaviors done obviously externally so with compulsions you have uh, cognitive factors such as uncontrollable urges realization of inappropriateness you have behavioral ones and remember compulsions are mainly behavioral so repetitive behaviors turning off and on uh, a light switch turning a light switch off and on uh, in order to reduce the anxiety that your whole family are going to die in a fire um quite a common quite a common um, compulsion uh, and obviously again you have hindering of everyday uh, functionality because all of a sudden you can't go to work because you, you're spending an hour locking and unlocking your door to make sure that it's actually locked um, and then finally emotionally there is clearly distress you know you know on some level that turning a light on and off again is not going to save your family from dying in a fire you know this but it causes you to stress not to do it. Um, so, um, and then obviously you have the worry of uh, people looking at you weird because you know turning a light on and off again isn't normal. You know that's not normal. So you, there's the, the emotional worry that you're going to be disapproved of by friends, for example. So that's a very, very brief run through. It's quite a short uh, screencast, this one. Um, but you do need to know the behavioral emotional and cognitive characteristics of phobias, OCD and depression. So there's a hell of a lot to this that you need to know that you need to revise. But to be honest, if you know these, if you know these disorders really well, if you know them really well off the top of your head, you shouldn't have to revise this. You should be able to think in the exam, what is a what is a behaviour that depressed people do? That's relatively easy to come up with. Hope that was useful. Peace out.